Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Mason, back once again. And uh, today we're breaking down the Little Uzi Vert beat that you guys voted for on my Instagram page on Wednesday. We did it a little bit earlier this week, I know. Uh, just going to be out of town this weekend, so I wanted to record this video. And I also wanted to make sure you guys still got the vote. Um, this beat was, uh, I think it was, it was pretty popular this time around. So we're uh, going to do an awesome breakdown. There are people who are torn between the Gunna beat uh driz i know that's you so uh we got to uh you know we had a lot of like conflicting opinions people wanted like the gunna beat some people wanted the puya beat somebody wanted uh you know but more people wanted this little uzi vert beat yeah but uh like i said every thursday is when it normally takes place and we just vote on my instagram if you don't already follow me then you better start following me if you want to start hearing your breakdowns all right not gonna tell you twice i lied but uh, let's get into this thing right now. I'm going to play this beat for you real quick, just so you can remember, remember what the beat sounded like. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's the that's the beat right there. That's uh, all together is what it sounds like. Um, I'll first go into the melodies as I always do. Uh, so let's see here. This first setting that I have here is an Electra plugin. It comes from a Noise Crate uh, playlist. It's an ARP. And it's called Axel. Um, so just naturally, what it sounds like on its own. Yeah, so that's, I mean, the ARP itself was, like, already great. I didn't really need to put any grow speed on it, although in the uh, verse, I do switch it up so it's not so repetitive. Man, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit here. Um, but I just mixed it like this, kept the ARP pretty much the same as it was, and then just let it follow this melody pattern. And I had, like, a little bit of a overlay here with some of the notes because it created this little glitch back kind of noise so it just wasn't so static and it made it sound like it's like oh it's like moving all over the place like it sounded like it was uh like it had gross beat on it even though it didn't um and you know it was a fun little melody to just play in there and have it bounce around like that um next I, i'm gonna go into the things that i layered i just layered chords over the top um i think i kept it the same with both the electro plugin and the omnisphere if i'm not mistaken yeah, I kept it exactly the same. So initially, I just had the Electra plugin with it, which is a stock Electra plugin. It's a, uh, let's make sure I got this going here. Okay, so this is the, this is a stock electric plugin. It's just keys. If you go to the second setting, it's called Sparkling Bells. I didn't really make any adjustments to it. I just thought it sounded like nice and bright, like like what Louis Ever usually goes for in a lot of his songs. He just goes for something bright. Um, but like as you can see, these are stacked chords. I didn't really like really mess around with them all that much. Um, I go from B D F, which would be the one chord, but then I like place it in a sixth. And then GBD, which is the six chord. So when I say six, I mean it's inverted. Um, then I go to EGB, and then I do a double inversion on that. This is just so that I can like keep the uh, static motion going throughout this. And then like I made this one a seventh chord just to add a little bit of extra tension. And I'll play it through so you can hear what I'm talking about. I just wanted to give a little bit of an explanation on the harmonics of it all. So 
so yeah, like you can see how it's building tension there. And then I layered it, like like I said too, with the Omnisphere, I layered the two together so they would like have a little bit more space. With the Omnisphere, I used uh, let's see, let's see what preset I used here. Warm Wigwam Pad. I think this is just a stock Omnisphere patch. Um, but yeah, I'll play them together for you real quick. Yeah, so you can hear that pad in the background. If you couldn't, uh, if your ear's not like trained to hear that, I'm gonna play it real quick so you can see what that just sounds like on its own. So you can see that like it just add a little bit of airiness into it. Um, like I said, all, like all together, all of this melody would sound like this. So yeah, like it, the way that I have this melody lined up. Like Lil Uzi Vert, like in terms of the beats that I've heard, the ones that I like, the ones that make me inspired to make more beats like him, like, like I would for him. Um, it's always glitchy to a certain extent. There's like always like a kind of like shift where it's not like just a standard melody like how it was in his original tracks. It's it's more of like a glitchy vibe now that he's kind of got going on. It makes it sound futuristic and all that. Uh, so that's like that's kind of why I went with that, but it's also like you got to keep it bright, even though this is a minor key, as you can see, it's a B minor scale. Um, you can keep it bright with like certain bell sounds to make it sound like that, and all together as a cohesive unit, it just sounds like okay, this is just a glitchy, bouncy type of beat. That's kind of like what Lulu's Uber's all about. Speaking of bounce, let's get right into the drums. All right, so first, starting with the hi hats. So I just really like, uh, I kind of like layered it over the five, but like the hi-hats are kind of all over the place. I'm letting them bounce, letting them rock, letting them do their own thing. I just did this because it's like, Lil Uzi like always has crazy hi-hats, like to go with that glitch type of sound. I keep that like, like I do in a lot of my beats, the ch -ch 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 with the velocity. So just making it, that in itself will always make it a little bit more bouncy uh, for your, you know, for your hi-hats. But yeah, it's just like keeping the rolls on the off beats so it's not hitting when the snare's hitting or any of that. Just because like for me that's what I like. But on here we we'll go into the clap. I'll actually do the clap and the snare together. So what I did here, as you can tell, it's a it kind of just loops. It's like I, I added a little bit more punch to this by like layering it with a just the one note below it to make it a doubled clap of sound, clap sound. So like, so like on the downbeat, it just goes a little bit harder. So it, before it leads into the next one, I just felt that that was like a nice strong way to keep the bounciness going. And then with the snare, just typical, you know, pattern up until the last part of that, which is right here. So like right there, you can see in this roll. I just wanted to give it more of a bounce than what it had before, just because uh, I felt that it was sounding too stagnant. Uh, then we'll go into the open hats. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll cover the open hats when I cover the 808 kicks. So I guess I'll just do them all together. So I, I wanted to have the high, the open hats, as you can see, they're kind of layered here with the uh, 808. So they hit at the same time. 
So you listening to it. Yeah, so it's just it just hits at the same time. And then with the 808s themselves, this is what they sound like. Yeah, so there's, I mean, nothing too, too complicated about that melody. Making sure that I'm within each one of the keys here. So, like, if you look at the bass notes for this, E. Let's go 10, yeah. So, I'm in the B note here. And then on the Omnisphere, I have B being the root note, but it's in the inverted scale, so it makes sense. And then just like follow the bass notes most of the time, uh, just because it makes it so much easier to make sure you're like on with your uh, pitches and all that. Make sure your thing is tuned also, uh, your 808. If you're using a sample, you have to make sure that's in the right root note. You can just do that through Edison. Um, Basically, how you do that is like you just drag your sample into this. Uh, let's do it from here. It's easier to just do it from your sample. You can right click on this and then you can edit an audio editor. You can check pitch regions and you can see, like, okay, it's already at C with the open hat here. But you can just set your root note by right clicking on it over here on the uh, envelope tab. It just, uh, you just need to do that so your 808s aren't out of key. I mean, that would just be bad. Because uh, it is the bass note uh, after all of your uh, whole song. But uh, going in with all the drums together, here's what it sounds like. Oh, let's get those up. Let's get the right hats back in there. Let's make sure that sounds right. And there you have it. I mean, that's the uh, those are the drums right there. That's what um, that to me sounds like a little Uzi beat, just because it's a lot bouncier than uh, your typical drum, and it's got a super, super, super bright and fun melody. But all together, I'm gonna play the beat. Oh, and one more fun little bonus thing. I also, like, when you're going into... When you're going into these, I, I layered these with the 808 and with the uh, open hat so that they would uh, they'd even be bouncier. So they're all connected together, and it's just building up into this next phrase or next verse or next part of the chorus. Um, I didn't do my typical, like, open hats over here just because I wanted to maintain the bounce throughout. But I did change it up, and I did say I would come back to this. So here's me coming back to this. Um, I wanted to talk about how I did the gross beat for the second half of this, uh, for the verse portion. So then that just builds up back into the chorus right before it comes back. I just wanted to touch on this just because if you're feeling like your uh, melody is just getting a little too stagnant, just put it in halftime and gross beat. And sometimes you can play with it in fun ways by just adjusting the uh, time mix knob here. I usually like if I'm gonna like do that and I'm gonna layer it. It's just because I don't. I feel like the melody itself sounds uh, not thick enough. I mean, you can use a doubler on that as well, but 
personally for me, I just like going the gross beat route just because sometimes it sounds cooler. I mean, sometimes there's a little bit of hiccups in the time and that makes it sound unique. And that, I mean, that works for me. But when with this one, I could just downplay it to the darker sound and it would just give it that like, okay, I'm bridging into the next thing here. But it's also like, oh, I'm not getting sick of that R hearing it over and 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 over, and over again. You know? Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, and then I, like, bled it out, like, this way, so you can just tell, like, all right, we're getting into the bridge. Like, I wanted to, like, bleed it out like this. So just a quick fade out, so it wasn't, like, abrupt, harsh cut to the melody, but it's like, okay, here it comes back at the end of this phrase. And then I uh, put my stereotypical, like, all right. I put my stereotypical, uh, cut just before the uh, beat comes back just because I wanted to like you know whenever I do this I just do this because to me that gives the artist to have the last little message before they send it off you know into the chorus again let them say their funny little line right before they get into it and make it all sound dope but yeah that's uh that's that side of it I'll go into the mix because I've been doing that the last couple of weeks people have been saying that's what they really 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 rock with there um so on these plugins i kept everything pretty much the same they were stock and then just for the bell i accentuated like uh just the higher mid regions because i felt like the ting could have been a little bit better on it um i'll, I'll play that real quick so you can kind of hear what i'm talking about so on this i wanted the uh I wanted the wobble to be a little bit more pronounced, and then on this, I raised the ting on it. So, like, I just wanted to show you which two parts it is. So, it's like the little ding, 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 that, like, sound that's in there. Those are the frequencies that I heard, so, like, those are the ones that I think are really, like, important in that one. And with the atmosphere, kept it the same. Same with the snare, clap, hi-hat. Just put it to the right or to the left, and yeah, that was that was all I did for this one. I think I like edited this in flex for my eight oh eight. No, I just I just used the stock one for this one. I I guess it was just bouncy enough already. Um, but yeah, going into that, that's that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Like I said, uh, I dropped the video like right around here somewhere for the end credits. Um. Make sure you check out that and then uh, check out the rest of my beat breakdowns. And if you ever want to hear a specific beat, want to have me do a tutorial for you or something else, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, just let me know what you guys want to hear. All right. Peace, guys.